Hi everyone. In the previous video, we learned about how statistics can be used for data analytics and we focused on learning different measures of center like mean, median and mode. We understood the difference between when you should use mean and median. We also focused a little bit on outliers and quartiles and interquartile range. So the continuation of that video is going to be the second part of how statistics can be used for data analytics. And in this video, we are going to talk a little bit more about measures of spread. Measures of spread or measure of variability generally talks about how distributed are all the data points across the data There are set. four commonly used different measures of dispersion which are range, variance, standard deviation and interquartile range. So let's start with range. Range is basically the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value of all the observations. So it basically tells you what is the range of the entire data set. Now let's see this with an example before moving on to understanding why range is not the best used measures of dispersion. Now let's consider a simple example. This is a small data set of employees working in a company called X. This is the same example of data that we used in the previous video as well. Here we have different positions of employees in a company, their years of experience and their salary. Now from I'm going to calculate the range of salary of any employee working in a company. So here I have identified my minimum or the least data point which is $60,000 and I've also identified the maximum value in my data set which is $150,000. So if I have to calculate range, I'm going to do it with a formula where I'm going to take the maximum value minus the minimum value which is $150,000 minus $60,000. Now the range is $90,000. Even though the measure of spread or measure of dispersion or variability talks about the overall distribution of data, range specifically talks only about the highest and the lowest data point. So it will only tell you what is the range. Range is basically like from one point to the other point that the, uh, all the data points basically lies between one point, which is the lowest point till the highest data point. It does not specifically tells you what's happening with the data points or observations which are in between the range. That means it doesn't tell you how the rest of the data points are distributed. It only talks about the minimum point and the maximum point. Now let's talk about standard deviation. First, let's understand that standard deviation is just a square root of variance. So to understand standard deviation, we need to first understand what is variance and then we can just apply square root to variance and get the standard deviation. So why standard deviation is the most commonly used measure of variability? That is because it considers both mean and the spread of data and that is why it is widely used and accepted as a measure of variability. So now let's look into the formula of standard deviation. On the screen you could see that the formula is under root of xi minus x bar whole square and that is all summation divided by n minus 1. Let's dig into this formula and understand every single part of it and then we will take an example to see how standard deviation is used in data analytics. Now how does this formula works is that in standard deviation we calculate the distance between each and every observation from its mean. So if this is our entire data set we are going to calculate the mean of this data first and then we are going to see the difference between each of these data point to its mean and that will be xi minus x bar. Here after we calculate all the deviations which is the differences between each observation till the mean we are going to add them up and that adding is going to be the summation of it. Now if you are wondering why is this whole square that is because few of these deviations could also be negative. That means any data points which are below mean their deviation or the difference is going to be in negative and to make it positive we use square root. After we calculate all the deviations and square them and add all of them we are going to divide them by n minus 1. n minus 1 is also known as degrees of freedom. Example to calculate the standard deviation in a step by step process. So first let's begin by calculating the mean of the entire data set. So for mean I am using a simple excel formula which is average and then I select the range or all the data points and I hit enter. 
here I could see that the mean of all of these data points is $83,555.56. So this is the mean. Now let's calculate deviations. As I mentioned, deviations is the difference or the distance between each and every observation from its mean. So the deviation is going to be just the actual observation minus the mean. Now here I have deviations for all the observations. If you can notice, you can see that there are few deviations which are in negative as well. And to consider or make them positive, we take the square of these deviations. So just to get the square of the, the difference, I'm going to multiply it by 2 or I could multiply it with the same number as well. It's just the same squ square value. So here I have the squared value of all the deviations. Now I'm going to add all of these deviations, which is the summation part in the formula. So this equals to sum of all of these observations or these squared deviations. And then this is my total sum. So basically from the formula, I just calculated the numerator part. My xi in the formula is each and every observation x bar is the mean which is my x this is my xi this is my x bar so first i calculated the difference between both of them as deviation and then i squared the deviation then i just added all of my deviations and this is my value now to get the denominator part which is n minus 1 i could simply see the number of observations i have over here and i know that there are only nine data points so n minus 1 that is 9 minus 1 is 8 so I'm going to divide my this numerator part by 8 so that I could get the variance of it. So my final variance is going to be, I'm just going to calculate it as equals this number divided by 8, which is my n minus 1. So this is the variance. But we know that the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So I'm going to calculate the standard deviation now. So standard deviation is going to be, let me just expand this. So the standard deviation is equals to the square root of this number. So this is my standard deviation. Now here I did each and every step of the formula in manually and I calculated the standard deviation. But another way to calculate standard deviation in Excel is to use a standard deviation formula, which is the standard deviation dot P or standard deviation dot S. Now standard deviation dot P indicates the standard deviation for the entire population. Whereas for sample, which is a part of the population, we use standard deviation dot S. Here, because I also have very few data points, I'm considering this as the sample of my population. So I'm, for now, I'm taking the formula of standard deviation dot S and I just select my data points. So here, if you could see, I got the exact standard deviation when I calculated manually as well for the formula. Or if I even use the Excel function, we get the same standard deviation. If you're wondering, standard deviation is just a number. How are you going to understand the spread of the data by just looking at the standard deviation? I know for a beginner level, this could be confusing to interpret anything from standard deviation. But to make it easier, let me tell you that if the standard deviation is low or if it is closer to zero or if it is closer to your mean, it means that all your data points are clustered tightly around your mean. And if you have a larger or higher standard deviation, then it means that your data points are spread across more widely. But in general, if you are still confused and still want to use standard deviation, but do not know how to interpret it, then let's talk about one simple rule. This rule is called as 689599.7 rule. This is a common rule or a property that is used for normal distributions to understand how the data points are spread across. And in that rule, we use standard deviation. So let me explain you a little bit more about that rule. And this is more like the applications of standard deviation in data analysis. So the 6895 99.7% rule follows that 
approximately 68% of all of your data points fall within the range of one standard deviation. Whereas approximately 95% of all of your data points fall within two standard deviations. That means the range between two times of your standard deviation from mean is where 95% of all of your data points fall across. And almost 99.7% of all the data points fall between three times of your standard deviation from mean. Now, let me take an example to explain you how this rule works and how can you actually apply the concept of standard deviation in your analysis. Here, I've just taken this image as a reference for us to know what 68%, 95%, and 99.7% actually means. So to get into this rule, let me calculate three numbers first. First, I'm going to calculate the one standard deviation. In general, standard deviation is denoted by sigma, but here I'm directly taking one standard deviation. And I'm doing this to calculate one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation in order to understand how the percentages of 68, 95, and 99.7 work. So the first standard deviation, I'm just going to multiply my standard deviation by one. This is my standard deviation. So I just need to take it as a formula, one times of standard deviation, and which is the same as my original standard deviation. Now I'm going to consider two standard deviation, which is nothing but two times of the standard deviation. Then similarly, we will consider and calculate three standard deviation, which is three times of the standard deviation. So after getting one, two and three standard deviations, we are going to see where the 68% of our data points lie within our data set. And for that, we are going to take our mean and add the standard deviation and subtract standard deviation from it. So that it gives us two values. So one is mean plus standard deviation. The other is mean minus standard deviation. Now here, when I consider mean minus one standard deviation, that will tell me the 68% of the individuals or the data points fall within the 68% of the data. So that is basically, I'm just going to take my mean minus one standard deviation. And then I have number of $56,513. And then I'm going to do mean plus the standard deviation. And that number is $110,597. So basically, according to this rule, because here we consider only one standard deviation or mean minus standard deviation, mean plus standard deviation, we are going to get that the 68% of the data points fall within the one standard deviation of mean. So one standard deviation of mean is this one. So basically the 68% of the salaries range between $56,513 and $110,000. Now, if you want to know where the 95% of the salaries fall within the data set, where are the 95% where the of the data points in your data set, you're going to do the same thing but you're going to calculate mean minus two standard deviation and mean plus two standard deviation. So these values we are going to calculate in a similar way. We are going to take our mean, then we'll do a minus with two standard deviation value is this one, which we already calculated. So our two standard deviation, one range of the value is that. And then we are going to do our mean plus two times of standard deviation, which is this value. So we could say that 95% of the data points fall within $29,471 and $137,639. So this is one good application of standard deviation to understand how your data is actually spread, how your, where are your data points actually lying. So this is a good understanding. Now, if you would like to compare this with range and say that even in range, we are defining two data points and saying that all the data points 
lie between these two values and then what is the difference between range and standard deviation let me tell you that in range we are only considering the maximum and minimum data points whereas here we are considering mean and standard deviation again standard deviation is nothing but the difference between each and every individual data point to their mean so we are basically considering the mean as well as the entire spread of the data while calculating the 68 95 and 99.7% rule so this is widely used compared to range so within the concept of measures of dispersion, we covered range, variance and standard deviation in this video. Interquartile range has been covered in the previous video. I will leave the link of that video in the description box below. Please do check that out to understand the concepts of interquartile range.